should see every single one of these matches on this list. Even if you already have, why not watch them again? Because they're great. It will make you happy. The reason we're going through them today, though, is not to remind you of this, but to flag that one thing everybody hates. Then try and figure out why. So I am signed for What Culture. Please do hit that subscribe button. This is 10 Things Everybody Hates About Amazing Wrestling Matches. Number 10, WCW screws up the pay-per-view. So we start at Halloween Havoc from 1998 when arguably Bill Goldberg had his best match ever. DDP was his opponent for this night and it was so awesome. In hindsight, we probably should have given Diamond Dallas Page the world title. I mean, it was so well done, I think most fans would have accepted it. At least more so than a cattle prod. The only thing that that ruined it was WCW going full WCW, because despite knowing that the pay-per-view was going to go long, they forgot to tell any of their pay-per-view providers. So that meant just as Goldberg and Page was really heating up, the feed went black and nobody could see what was happening. Great work, team. It became a ripe farce as the next day on Nitro, World Championship Wrestling decided to re-air the match for free, leaving a lot of people screwed over. I mean, they may as well have just thrown their money at the wall, especially because the match that caused all this was the Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. If you've never seen that, keep it that way. Because <laughs> my word. Number nine, John Stewart's random heel turn. So this was weird, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. Coming all the way back at SummerSlam 2015, Seth Rollins and John Cena clashed in a WWE title versus US title winner takes all match. Man. These two. They always had great chemistry as they proved here one more time and it ruled. The Brooklyn fans totally bought into it too and were going nuts. I think we captured magic in a bottle. Until that is, we got to the finish. Because for no reason, TV host and all round good guy John Stewart, who was the guest host for the evening, decided he wanted to play a part of this. So he got in the ring and he smashed Cena with a chair. What? I suppose if it's a built to something, that would have been fine. But no, John passed it off as being a Ric Flair fan and didn't want Cena to beat the Nature Boys World Championship Reigns record. So he decided to do this. Then we never chatted about it again. Great. Now, of course, we did this as WWE wanted Seth to get the win, but Big Match John must be protected at all costs. But I don't think this was it. It was just so weird and pissed people off in the wrong way. The match deserved better. Number eight, Vader's unwanted interference. Go back and watch In Your House Mind Games. Mankind finally gets his due as he takes on Shawn Michaels, and it is fantastic, especially if you can somehow transport yourself to 1996 and watch it from there, which you can't, because that's impossible. Even Mick Foley regards this as one of his favorite matches, which says a lot, as he proved to everyone he was more than a crazy dude that took bumps. Foley was a top-class storyteller that could sell his ass off, Man, he's such a hero. What has been lost to the annals of time, which is likely for the best, is the finish kind of stinks. Because to continue on another feud, Vader runs out towards the end of this, smacks Michaels to cause the DQ. I don't see why we couldn't have had the Heartbreak Kid just win before the shenanigans, although I suppose it did help mankind. He didn't get properly beat. When you do have such top tier action though, sometimes you do just want a clean ending. This felt like we were over egging the pudding. Number seven, Paul Heyman's handcuff troubles. Back at the 2021 Raw Rumble, Kevin Owens took on Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal title. It was a last man standing match so they held each other around. And when KO handcuffed Roman to part of the entranceway, it was a great tease. The head of the table had to answer the count of 10, but how can he do that if he's in prison? I liked it. As we know, the bloodline was coming of age during this period, especially the alliance with Paul Heyman. So he had prepared for this, which was handy. Why not get some tools and free his tribal chief from such a horrible fate? Well, I tell you, because he couldn't do it. Yep. In an incident I'm sure we were all squirming at, Heyman just couldn't save Roman, meaning the referee, who knew this wasn't the finish, had to stop counting and pretend that he was distracted. Ah, boy. These things happen and really is nobody's fault. Not like they wanted to do this, but it really did take away from the matches both Reigns and Owens have hinted at after the fact. They knew. How could they not? Number six, that klaxon trolling. Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler rocked up to Extreme Rules 2018 and decided to show everyone how good they were. Fair play to those guys. They did it. It was also a 30-minute Iron Man clash, so we were having some fun here. Or I should say the fans were. 
because despite what was happening in the ring, they all decided the on-screen clock was more entertaining. So every time a one-minute countdown got to zero, the audience went, ah, and made that Royal Rumble noise. It was kind of funny at first, but because it went on and on, after a while it was infuriating, so much so WWE just took the clock off the screen. I mean, why wouldn't they? It became disrespectful if we're honest and you can see both Rollins and Ziggler were irked by it. And how could you not be? You're trying to smash it and every 60 seconds you get, ah. Eh. I mean, just don't do it. It has basically become a meme these days but caused all kind of problems at the time. Sometimes I just think we all need to remember that we are not the focal point. Number five, fans hate the universal title. We are going back to SummerSlam 2016 when Seth Rollins and Finn Balor competed to become the first ever universal champion. It was great. These two were never going to have a bad match, and even though Finn got injured during the thing, meaning he had to give up his newly won belt in 24 hours, this remains a fantastic watch. As long as you can ignore the start. Because before we got going, co-GMs Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon arrived to show off their shiny new title, and everybody booed. This was mostly because we had gone with Extreme Red to match the fact it was going to be defended on Raw, and yeah... When you first see it, you sort of laugh and then want to run away. The audience soon started to chant that look stupid, which ties into what we've already talked about. Nobody was paying attention to the match, which is the worst. Thankfully, Balor and Rollins were able to quell these after a while, but still, when you watch it even now, you just want the floor to gobble everybody up. It's terrible. Number four, AEW's flubbed explosion. So we are going to talk about this forever, and I get it. You can't advertise an exploding death match and then get the kaboom wrong. People are going to be upset. It was all situated around John Moxley versus Kenny Omega at Revolution 2021. And my word, they killed each other. Don't forget the ring had barbed wire ropes. And some of the falls they took were horrendous to see. And yet when it came to the big finale, it was like watching a sparkler going off. It got worse as Moxley was left in the ring, so out came best friend Eddie Kingston to save him. And as they had no choice, they both had to sell this like death even though a child could have been in there and would have barely struggled. This really wasn't a problem. Believe you me, nobody was more disappointed afterwards than Omega and Mox, and even Tony Khan admitted he was upset too. So while it's fair to talk about, remember they were also pissed off. The plan just went flying out the window. Number three, the lack of falls. So this one has developed with age. At WrestleMania 12, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels took a massive risk when they decided to do a one-hour Iron Man match in the main event. The big question was whether they could keep the audience's attention, and even today you'll get mixed replies to this. Split's opinion. Now you can't fault their work rate or just how good they are at wrestling, but the choice to do zero falls within the 60 minute time limit meant some people thought this was boring. And I do get that too. Surely the joy should be pins coming out of nowhere, but we went in the complete opposite direction. It did lead to some good storytelling as we went into sudden overtime after the hitman had Michaels caught in the sharpshooter as the time ran out. But you could have done this with the scores at 3-3 and received the same reaction. Or so we think. So it really is a fascinating case study. It may be a match that has got worse as the years have gone by. But there's only one way to make up your own mind. You've got to watch it. Number two, the botched clock. And talking of Iron Man matches, this one went totally the other way. Because a few years later at Judgment Day 2000, The Rock and Triple H decided they were going to try this. <laughs> yeah, they pushed the shenanigans button. Shawn Michaels was also back as the special guest referee, and before he got truly mad, the score was already 5-5. Five -five. It's bonkers. Nothing will prepare you for the final few minutes either, because my word. Not only does the corporation get involved, but from nowhere, The Undertaker made his big return as all the camera people struggled to keep up with this. Seriously, the shots are all over the place. It gets even crazier as quite clearly the timer runs out. So even though we needed the dead man to whack Triple H to cause the disqualification, meaning The Rock had lost, technically the thing was already over. The production crew realized this, they just turned off the clock, which is hilarious. And honestly, this is just something else. I don't get how anybody thought they were going to pull it off in the first place because there's just so much going on. The thing is, in many ways, the chaos actually makes the thing better, even if some people can't handle it. It is just so potty and you will never be bored. Number one, Steve Austin's heel turn. Well, we all know this one. At WrestleMania 17, Steve Austin decided the writing was on the wall and he needed to be ahead of the curve, so he made the decision and turned heel. He also chose to do this in Texas, which was stupid because Stone Cold could have punted a child and somehow these fans would have decided it was the kid's fault. They just loved this guy. As was the case with most of the world too, so no matter what the rattlesnake did, he couldn't get any of this to stick. It's why when his epic match with The Rock at the granddaddy of them all culminated, a lot of people were a bit gutted. 
because they just wanted to see their hero win in the heroist way possible. And it's not like it didn't give us some amazing moments as unhinged bad guy Austin was hilarious, but this was not the right move on any level, especially as people just stopped watching WWE altogether. Know of any other things everybody hates about amazing wrestling matches? Make sure you let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read more articles like this with your eyes. Please do come follow us on social media at whatculturewwe and Simon Miller 316 and if you would be so kind to watch another video, we will love you forever. My name is Simon What Culture. Thank you very much for giving me your ears for the last 10 minutes or so. I always do appreciate it. Kiss for you.